the more I use Nabla, the more I fall in love with it and the more I discover new and amazing ways to just satisfy my inner magpie. Hello beautiful people! Hi! My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. There isn't going to be any criticism of it today. I'm doing another Project 5 Wears with my wonderful friend Mariam A. I'm going to of course link her channel and her video down below and you better go watch it. Or else. To tell you a bit about Mariam, she is honestly... She's amazing. She is a grown-ass woman and acts like it, which is, she is honestly goals, she's an accomplished career woman, she has a beautiful family, including a cat. She has honestly amazing, beautiful looks. I love the looks that she posts. She posts very regularly on Instagram. So if you're always on the lookout for interesting color combos, interesting shadow placements, that's the place to go. She's honestly such a pleasant person to talk to, to discuss makeup with. She is as enthusiastic and also as critical about makeup as I am and honestly, I love her. Go check her out, please. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. If you don't know what Project 5 Wears is, it's a challenge to take one palette that we both have and create five looks with it. It's an interesting way to shop your stash, to come up with new ways to use what you already have and to rediscover what you had once loved or maybe discover what you like and don't like about a palette that you've not used much. In my case, it was a palette that I already know and love. Oh, it's... As I was saying, that I already know and love. This is the Soul Blooming palette from Nabla. This is how it looks like inside, a very beautiful mix of springy colors, some neutrals, some pops of color. It's a palette that I honestly just can't get enough with. And in the five looks that I created, this is actually the fifth one, I kept finding new ways to play with these shades and it's actually given me some thought on how to use other palettes in my collection with the things that I did for this look and the fourth look, which I feel were the most out of my comfort zone for me in terms of eyeshadow placement and eyeshadow shape. That was interesting. I really feel like I learned a lot from this Project 5 Wears and I honestly can't wait for the next one. I love these so much and it's been a pleasure doing all of these five looks. If you're curious about the looks, well, keep on watching. I won't show you a step-by-step. -step. That is not the scope of the project. Uh, the scope of the project is just to talk about the looks. I will tell you what shades are placed where, how I did it, what type of brushes, if it's relevant. And also in the corner of the footage, you're going to have a picture of the look and then the placement itself circled for clarity. Editing Mia here. I find it really interesting that this whole video is basically my progression in figuring out my camera settings because the first one still has the smoothing filter which I had no idea was per default in the camera. Then the second one I was like oh let's play with the exposure and it's way too light and then the rest just kind of very it's it's still a work in progress without further ado let's get on to the meat of the video to quote my friend hannah this is the first look and i decided to go all in with some shades that i rarely use from the palette and that is with anemone which i actually avoid in the mornings because it does tend to have some fallout and i don't want to deal with that when i rush in the morning let me tell you how i created this look i first put on a white base the makeup revolution conceal and define in c0 i then set it with a white eyeshadow so everything blends nicely in the crease with a very fluffy blending brush, I took Gia and added it all over the crease, extended it a bit in the outer corner and just flicked it out a tad. 
Then I continued with Bolero on both the lower lash line, the crease to deepen the color and deepen the gradient, and then on the lid as well, maybe covering up until this half portion with the color. I grabbed a anemone on a flat packing brush and I started building the color all over my lid. With a very tiny fluffy blending brush, I grabbed anemone again in the crease to blend out these two colors and make the gradient from bl uh, blue to pink that much more smoother. After that I grabbed anemone on my finger because this type of shade I feel applies the best with a finger, not with a brush. With a brush it applies just a bit sheer, but with a finger you really get the full intensity of the color. I grabbed it on my finger, as I said, placed it all over the lid, took that fluffy blending brush from earlier again and blended everything. With a flat brush I also added it to my lower lash line. Because I felt the look lacked depth, I took Caravaggio on a tiny fluffy blending brush and added it on my lower lash line over here and then in the outer V winging it out a bit towards the outward part of my eye to give my eyes a more elongated type of look. Forgot to mention that I also added philosophy right in the center of the lid which um, changed the whole look from a blue look to a purple look but you know what i'm not mad at it at all basically this was the first look i hope you enjoyed it let's get on to the others shall we second look here guys and as you can see i'm just playing a bit with different color contrasts in this case blue and brown I first started by adding a Gia all over the crease using this fluffy brush. This is a Cupio 305, I believe, and I bought this just this month and I love it because it's really, really big and fluffy and it helps blend out the crease color absolutely beautifully. I deepened it out with... Bolero and Middle Karma mixed. Added Middle Karma in the inner and outer corner of my lid to start creating that halo eye effect. Then deepened the halo eye with Caravaggio at the very extremities. And then Caravaggio at the latest third, I winged it out just a tiny bit. I've also added it on the first third of my lower lash line. And on my lower lash line I added anemone all over it and blended it into the Caravaggio brown. In the middle of the lower lash line I added Garden Gate. And then because I wanted this to mirror the halo eye on top, I added Garden Gate in the middle part of my eye as well. And that was the halo eye. It actually took a surprisingly little amount of time to create because I love using very fluffy brushes. Very fluffy brushes used with this type of very soft formula of matte mean that the mattes just blend themselves. That's kind of what I like about Nabla mattes. They are very, very easy to blend into each other. I also added Garden Gate a bit into my inner corner over here. I was actually planning to film using this look because I'm really feeling myself but I don't know what happened. My camera battery just decides to die. It's like it's 10% and I don't understand why because I remember putting it to charge so uh, I'll probably film tomorrow. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this look. Let's get on to the next one. Hi guys, today I'm actually going for a lighter look. I have to represent the company I work for at a tech fair together with some of my other colleagues. So I wanted something that wasn't too eye-catching. When I put my glasses on, it it looks like a daytime look. See, it's not it's not that in your face. And oh my god, I need to clean these because they are filthy. 
So I was in the mood for something light, but I didn't want no makeup makeup or just, you know, a matte in the crease, just something that would make my eyes pop. I really did want to play a bit. So let me show you how I created this look. What I first started with was chamomile all over the lid and the crease area, followed by Gia all over the crease, all over the lid, packed finely into the lid with a flat packing brush. Knew I wanted something as a base for the duochromes. Then I've added bolero to the outer V area just for a pop of pink, a bit of added interest. I've also added a mix of bolero and guia to my lower lash line. Then I added philosophy all over the lid up until stopping to this outer third. On the outer third, I've used climbing rose, everything packed on with my fingers. I find Nabla formula, especially for the shimmers, and these crystal type textures or whatever they call them, these are best applied with a finger. The shimmers you can make do with a brush, they work very well with a brush. But these ones you won't enjoy as much unless you pack them on with a finger. And for a bit of more visual interest, I've taken Honey Drip and placed it right in the middle between those shades just for a bit of a another reflect going on. For a bit of depth in the outer corner, I've taken Caravaggio on a liner brush, lined this outer portion and flicked it out a bit. And also just a tad bit on the lower lash line to define that. Overall, this look really didn't take me much, maybe 10, 15 minutes total without the face. I feel that it's something really pretty, springy, airy, feminine, won't be too much too visible underneath my glasses so i'm pretty happy hello y'all fourth look i had such a shit day at work i am having an existential crisis of the type is this all there is to life coupled with my general depressive tendencies, perfectionism, and generally me being a magpie with anxiety, just today's not been a good day. So I decided to retreat a bit into my sparkle palace that is my vanity and play with shadow placements that I haven't really tried before, just experiment a bit to at least feel I was just the teeniest bit creative today. Um, I've tried this whole darker on the inner corner as opposed to the outer corner like I usually do it and I quite like the look. I might try it with neutrals at work at first and see how I like it and what the reactions are from the locals. How I created this look? Well, I first added bolero in the crease and all over the lid. As you can see, bolero is a shade I really love and use a lot. Over Bolero, I added Climbing Rose on the lid. Then in the first third up to maybe the half, up to maybe the half of my eyelid, I've added Garden Gate, which is ah, such a gorgeous little chrome. Then with a cat's tail type of brush, so a brush that is flat and then has like an arch, I've added an anemone on this inner corner building this sharp-ish shape just from the brush and then starting on my lower lash line it just flicked it out a bit because I figured it would be a nice visual balance to have these darker portion at the extremities, one that points up and the other that points a bit down towards the lower lash line. Something a bit graphic without being harsh or very defined. This has been the look, I hope. It was worth putting up with my whining in the first couple of seconds. I'll see you guys with the next one. Final look, and this look actually was a bit of a experiment, a bit of a revelation. It's nothing like I wanted it to look like initially. Initially I wanted to do an all blue 
cat eye flick sort of look and that didn't happen because I done fucked up so I started with flowery and decrease which was um, a mistake because I forgot that I need to use flowery with a white base so what happened is that since I just had a regular primer on I looked bruised it was not a good look and I was like okay maybe I can salvage it maybe I can continue maybe I can fix it so I went with anemone all over the lid it looked like a hot mess then I continued with anemone in the crease it looked even more like a hot mess so I was like okay let's wipe this away and as I started wiping I came out with this shape so more prominent inside not extended outwards at all and I was like oh that's that's actually an interesting eye shape to work with so I did the same, I tried to erase everything symmetrically, worked a bit with anemone in this inner corner over here to just make it gradiented and pretty. And then because I couldn't leave well enough alone, like you know me, I gotta fiddle with it. I took philosophy, no, I took honey drip and added it to the outer corner and I realized that it actually looked like pure chunks of glitter, like it didn't mix well with anemone. So I took philosophy on top of it and I liked how that came out. And I couldn't leave well enough alone again and went with climbing rose right in the middle between them. So I sort of got this purplish, violetish shade from mixing these two one on top of the other. Took anemone again and added it a bit to that outer corner over here. So I'm left with a very interesting eye shape. Maybe I don't enjoy as much the full execution of it, but I do enjoy the shape itself and I'll probably use it again. It, I feel like it makes my whole face look different in a way, but in a good way. So yeah, it was a fun experiment, all thanks to a makeup wipe. Okay guys, these were it. These were the five looks. I hope you enjoyed them. Please don't forget to go to Marianne's channel. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful evening, morning, second breakfast, third lunch, whatever it is where you're from in your corner of the world. Bye.